He suggested that we use land survey notes and the sketches that the, the uh, surveyors did uh, from the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. And we used that to locate the route uh, the groups that used as they went through Texas. Well, these notes and sketches were provided to us on a CD by the Arkansas State Surveyor's Office. And uh, so I was able on my computer then to expand the scale of the sketches to where they match the, the scale of the uh, county roads. And then I printed them and held them up uh, to, uh, uh, to a piece of, uh, we could still things, still see things. And uh, we selected 23 right, uh, sites where you could actually see vestiges of the old trail that will take all the way back to the about 1800s when they first started. So now all we needed was the sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> I took my sketchbook and my pencil and started to work while Jerry and Bill were working on the, the uh, sites. But try as hard as a night I could not come up with an idea that I felt did justice to the courage and the strength and the power that those people uh, uh, had as they endured that terrible winter trail. So one day I was sitting in uh, the gallery part of our studio and the lights were dim, very dim, and I was meditating. And so my, my vision uh, was dim and I became aware of the piece that we had in the center of the gallery at that time. It consisted of five units and each unit was two upright oak beams and they were joined by a steel bar and from that bar on a chain hung a great huge uh, rock. Teardrop. Yeah, shaped shape like a teardrop. Yeah. And suddenly I knew I had my sculpture. I didn't have to sweat it. And um, it was right there in front of me. I had named the original piece Stone Songs. <coughs> so it became Stone Songs on the Trail of Tears. Well, while Pat was ruminating and meditating and trying to come up with a sculpture, uh, Bill Wadeel and I went out and we had to get permissions from the landowners. And uh, that meant we had to contract, uh, contact private parties, private farmers, and city and town governments. And remarkably, only one person, one farmer, said, no, I don't want you on my land. Banquets. Oh. And you did that, and then we, we saw them at, at, uh, at white tastings, and we became friends, and they've invited us out to their home out in the woods. And when our daughter was born in 1995, they, they threw a, a baby shower for us, which was, they're the nicest people in the world. I can tell you that. If anyone de denies that, I'm going to beat them up. <laughs> uh, we've been friends ever since, and uh, we can't think of better friends. Happy birthday. Well, I'm Connie Hendricks Crawl, I'm married to him, and actually, they didn't meet me until probably a couple of years after Tim had met, because I was actually at the University of Georgia, and when I came back, I got married, and, and we got to know both of you, and I think the thing that is so impressive to me is the wonderful partnership that you had, you're such an inspiration. Happy birthday, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Jennifer, I am a granddaughter, and I have an opportunity to speak later, so I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> you are short and there. <laughs> I'm Eric Zim, and I have the opportunity to marry uh, Pat's granddaughter, Pat's granddaughters, and our two boys, Case and Cole. And I, after I met Jamie, and was had the opportunity to marry such a beautiful woman, I could see. Uh, a pattern here as I met her mom, her mother, her aunts, and we can see the source of that beautiful energy <laughs> and where it all came from. <laughs> Case?
Carr, Jerry's daughter, twin to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jamie Carr Wilson. I am the daughter to Jerry and stepdaughter to Pat. And um, <clears throat> I know Greg would have wanted to be here today, but um, um, he would have expressed his love and his gratitude for you guys as well. Um, we kind of patterned our marriage after yours because it was collaborative. Your, your marriage is collaborative, it's creative. Not without conflict, <laughs> but I mean, just just so steady and so strong. And I think I told you guys a couple weeks ago, you guys were both like my northern star. You're always there, always solid. And uh, so I love you deeply. And happy birthday, Pat. I love you. Love you too. So I'm Jeff. I'm her twin. I'm number two of six. Old son. Um, I feel so um, uh, blessed that we were introduced as, as uh, young kids to this beautiful country here by, by our dad. Uh, it was the beginning of, a, of a, a, a dream for me to someday own a piece of property and, and build a ranch and build a, a future and I'm doing that now in Texas Hill Country with my wife. And, um, and, and I, we're so fortunate to have, once Dad and Pat were married, to have Pat enriching our relationship to this area through her creativity, through her <coughs> insights, and, and showing us a way to live in harmony and with relationships to the land and the things that are around us. Uh, I always appreciate that very much, and happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron Carr, my little brother, and Pat, you got me to realize art a bit. I love it. And I'm proud of you for what you do, and I'm proud of you for making something out of my brother. <laughs> don't get to do this very often. And so not only coming to celebrate my grandmother's 90th birthday and their birth anniversary, um, celebrating and seeing cousins that I haven't seen for years, and uh, I'm gonna say nieces and nephews because we're all like sisters that I haven't seen for years is just a treat. So Grandma, thank you for bringing us all together for your very special day, and I love you more than words can say. <laughs> Hello, so I'm uh, Thomas Wynn. I am uh, married to my beautiful wife, Marley. And uh, back when I first uh, met Pat and Jerry, was at their home. They invited us uh, uh, back when we were dating. And uh, I have to admit, it was a very surreal experience. It was um, a very unique house. It's not every day you go somewhere and see a, a, a sculpture garden. Not a small one, but you know, scanning an entire few acres you know, down below the house. And, uh, um, it was 
uh, I think to build on what Jesse said, it was really inspirational to see what they have built there and what they have done, um, and, and to get an opportunity to see the art that they had in the uh, the warehouse that they had on site. And uh, I remember uh, spending some time with Jerry in his office and, and, and looking on the wall and the, the plaques and things he's accomplished, and I thought to myself, I haven't really done anything in my life. <laughs> and um, and I, I think, you know, spending time with them uh, does inspire you to be better. And it, uh, and it made me realize that if I'm going to marry this girl, I'm going to have to step up my game. <laughs> I'm very blessed to know you. Happy birthday. Um, looking forward to the next 10 birthdays. I'm really excited. So we'll, um, and I love you. <laughs> Mary Wynn and Thomas' mother, and mother-in-law to this amazing granddaughter of Pat's and Jerry's, and of course I didn't get to meet them until about the time that uh, that Marley and Thomas decided to get married, and I think it's wonderful that all of you have had your grandparents for so long and gotten to know them, and even the uh, you know great grandparents and Pat, happy birthday and as he says best wishes for another 10 or 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Jerry Matulka and uh, we met Pat and Jerry through the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation so what we've done in the last two, uh, 10 years we started out with a common cause became friends and now what I call them family by choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm Jewel Branson, and I'm Jerry's mother. Um, I met Jerry when I was in Florida about two years ago, and I just met Pat yesterday. <laughs> 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 I'm Jerry Matolka, uh, her grandfather, her husband. I grew up on uh, in Nebraska watching Jerry on television, and uh, he and the rest of the astronauts uh, inspired me to become an engineer, so I'm an electrical engineer. And as Mary said, through the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, we got to know Jerry and Pat, and uh, got to share some wonderful experiences and became, became friends and family now with them. And, and uh, they continue to inspire me. I, Kicked up my cooking game because of Jerry and Pat. They drank the house one time and we actually got on a television show last September with them and cooked in Italy with them and it's uh, just fabulous. Happy birthday. Thanks. Thanks for Hello, I'm Shannon Diller Mitchell. I live in Fayetteville. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Pat about 25 ish years ago as a curator at the University of Arkansas on Little Rock and then later University of Arkansas Fayetteville. And now I have the pleasure of curating the Tyson Foods corporate collection. So if anyone really heard her talk, that's where the um, stone songs reside very happily on the campus there at Tyson Foods. But most of all, you've just been such good friends. I too have enjoyed Jerry and Pat's cooking and wine dinners. And, and it's been a blessing to know you both. And Pat, happy birthday. Thanks for putting me. Well, I'm sorry my my taller and better half is not here. <laughs> He's hungry. He'll be fine. <laughs> Actually, the first time we heard of Jerry Carr and Bill Pogue was in 1976, when we, actually 75, when we purchased our property in the valley, which you all saw yesterday. And uh, we were very intrigued two astronauts live on the cliff overlooking our humble little hippie house. <laughs> but I believe I didn't meet you, Jerry, in those days, or if we did, it was very brief. Uh, until you came to scope out the land and think about a house to build on the cliff. And that is where Tom stepped up to the plate to say that he would be the contractor for the building, and you accepted. So that began a very long and 
an exciting adventure. Going back and up, up and down the toilet and uh, watching your home from the very start, from the back home. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you watched our children grow and became fat. Public relationship. Then eighty three. <laughs> well, I've been in New Lancaster and I, I met the Pat and Jerry going out to their wonderful house on the cliff and some memorable uh, New Year's Eve dinners there. And I'm so jealous of anyone who can get this much of their family all together in one place. I'm really jealous of you. <laughs> Before that table goes, I wanted to quickly represent our brother John, who couldn't be here today. And, uh, he, he would have loved to have been here and said uh, thanks and happy birthday. But I know there was a memory that Pat probably has of John and one memorable summer when he, uh, he stopped up there and it involved chewing tobacco and cans all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> stop by and we said great and um, so we got to know him and he's the bravest man I know because he actually got married on this lady's birthday so if he ever forgets their anniversary he is uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Barbara Mensch and I live in Manchester Vermont and um, I met Jerry and Pat when they moved to Manchester, uh, how many years ago? Ten. Oh, Ten. It's amazing. Um, I just wanted, before I say anything about Pat, which I don't even know where to start to begin, I mean, I didn't go right up. Um, I just, when I, in 1979, oh geez, um, I was 14, 15 in a summer camp, and Skylab was falling, okay, so we made hats out of tin foil to protect ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> the Skylab fell in our camp, which was a, a big chance because um, our worlds were the only thing we knew. So um, and we called our parents to say goodbye in case like it fell on them or whatever. <laughs> it turned out okay, it's not the easy notion, but anyway, um, I couldn't believe when I actually met the commander of Skylab and um, that so I, I mean, I know Bill was excited for a different reason, but um, I was just excited to know that I met So uh, Pat, we met Jerry first to Bill, and I just have to do it on Thursday. I work I'm at a school, and I work in a special ed department. On Thursdays, we're always like, what are you doing this weekend? So he's like, oh, I'm going to go to the football game. Oh, I'm going to go for a jog. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to Arkansas. And in Vermont, you don't go to Arkansas. <laughs> and they're like, why? And I said, do you know Pat Music? And they're like, no. And I go, well, if you do, you would know why I'm heading to Arkansas. <laughs> so Pat, nothing, you know, you are drawn to us. Um, you have inspired us. Um, your meals are an adventure. <laughs> if Pat asks you to come over dinner, it's, it's not just a meal, it's an adventure. It's a time capsule. We talk about where the food came from and every artifact in your 
your apartment is just a story in itself, and um, I'm so blessed to be a part of that and to share that. You share that with us too. So happy birthday, Pat! You're amazing. And your family. I'm married to the woman with the tinfoil hat. <laughs> As a person of science, I know what you're thinking, but she's all mine. You can't have her uh, Tinfoil wouldn't have helped if Skylab came down. Because... <laughs> We're from the great state of Vermont who brought you Bernie Sanders. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> um, Jerry and Pat mean a lot to us. I just really want to quickly say that as a, as a space guy and I teach a course about space exploration, when an Apollo astronaut moves to town, that's a big deal. Um, after stalking Jerry for a few weeks, he invited me to come over to his house and I'm excited. I've memorized everything. Cap count for Apollo 8, Cap count for 12. I know the whole deal. He's see 84 days in space, Skylab 4, Commander. Should have walked on the moon, but the budget was cut and he wasn't there. <laughs> so I walk in and there's Pat. Jerry will be here in a little bit. He's getting his ears checked because Jerry and I share deafness, which is fun. And I said, Oh, that's beautiful. That art is beautiful. Who made that? She goes, I did. I'm like, Whoa, what about this? I made that. We're going around the house. Now, Jerry Carr, Paul Ass, now my first Paul Ass shot. Can't wait to meet him comes in the door and I'm like, hang on, we're not <laughs> looking at things. And, and ever since both of them have been generous with my classes, whether it was space or whether it was it was the art or whether it was together putting it there. And and, and musics and, and cars, uh, we just love hanging with your people uh, in in Vermont and, and it's a it means a lot to be here. And there's no, I don't know if there's anybody else I'd leave on a Friday and have to be back on a Sunday night um, to get to a place that you can't get there from here. So, uh, happy birthday, Pat. We love you. And in 10 years, let's do this again in here. Okay. Hi, I'm Pat's daughter, Lori. And I think most of this table belongs to me. And my um, daughters and grandsons here, and I have a chance to speak in a few minutes, so I will sit back down. <laughs> I'm Carol Perry, and I'm married to Steve. And uh, the first time I met Pat and Jerry was when Steve was still a pastor in Manchester. And I was called to, to him uh, because he said, I want to, to meet somebody. And there was Pat and Jerry, and he wanted me to meet, first of all, Pat, because of my love for art. And he said, here's another artist. And I think the two of us, and then you and Jer uh, Jerry also, we just connected right away. And I have to say that we moved around in the, in the United States, I'm from Switzerland originally, for 40 years in different parishes, and we made friends here and there. And I never thought that we would make, in the last parish, the most incredible friends that you both are to us. Uh, it's made Manchester, for me, and I think for Steve too, the, the best place. Uh, we're no longer in the church, but our friendship is beyond any boundaries, I think, and it's been enriching us, it's been enlivening us, it's been making us more interested in so many more things. We connect in art, we connect in spirituality, we connect in Native American history and love for the earth, we connect in so many ways. So our times together are like these bright spots of light that encourage, inspire, and make us want to go more and more, have more and more of it. And we've mentioned the meals and we do get together every once in a while when we can for this simple meal. We <laughs> end up growing into something gourmet and beautiful and of course artistic and creative and it just enlivens us. And Pat, you are such an inspiration to me and I hope to keep going and be young like you are in spirit forever. Thank you. <laughs> Steve Perry, and uh, I can't do better than what Carol just said, <laughs> and nor do I want to try, but I do want to say and express my love for you, Pat, and for you, Jerry. Um, you are inspirations to me, and that we sit at this table with you today, and with your family from so far away, and friends of all these years, it's a deeply moving experience for me, and, and I'm, I'm just so grateful that I can be part of, of this 
this little world. Family. Uh, you know, what we do with each other uh, really is mirrored in the larger world. And so if we're really good to each other, where we are, it has effects on a lot of other things that go on. And so being the best that you can be, and that's what you always are doing, being the best that you can be um, is gives us hope. Because uh, that's what I want to do as I grow up. And, uh, and I think that as we try to do that, the more conscientious we are at being the best people we are and can be, and if we recognize the gifts that we have in us and celebrate those and be grateful for those, then I think that our world is made better. And you make our small world better, but the larger world too, because the ripple effects go out everywhere. And I'm just so happy that I can be part of this celebration of you, Pat, and you, Jerry. Um, uh, and uh, thank you. Patrizia will speak and I will transfer. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all of this, I'm really speechless, so I'm not going to speak. Um, there's a statement on your little Natsuki card which says it for me. Thank you all for the gift of you in my life.
but we um, wanted to speak together. And since we are yeah. three sisters, we talked about how do we encapsulate all of the incredible gifts that Mom and Jer are and have shared. And since we're three sisters, we decided we're gonna focus it all into three gifts. So we're each gonna speak on one of the gifts, and maybe we'll begin with the gift of education, and then Lori's gonna speak on the gift of creativity, and I'm going to speak on the gift of travel. Okay. So, um, the, the word gift to us, we also extended to be the word love for, value in our lives, and education is, um, you know, first and foremost in that for, um, for me personally as a teacher. Um, but it began when we were really little. And I can't remember a time when mom was not teaching us and sharing that love of knowledge and that questioning about the world around us. And um, I can remember in New Hampshire when we lived there, walks along the streams by Storrs Pond and looking at salamanders. And she even let me have a pet snake in a garbage pail, I mean in a diaper pail, <laughs> one of those old metal diaper pails which tells you how old I am, um, but um, yeah, with a screen and a brick on top of it, I had my snake. Um, but that gift of education and that love of education spanned our lives. Um, there were some lessons that mom drilled into us, like any good parent does, like you cross at the corner, you wait for the light, the one light in town, maybe two, maybe there were two lights in town in our little town in New Hampshire. And one day I was walking home from kindergarten, because we lived in a little town, and you walked and rode your bikes everywhere, and we did not have um, cell phones or, or you know any GPS tracking on your kids but it was like we'll see you at dinner and um, um, I was walking home from kindergarten when I was little and I did not go to the corner I decided I was going to cross the street and um, take a shortcut home and lo and behold here comes a Dartmouth maintenance truck and here comes Mindy and we met in the middle of the road, and he sent me Astrid to Kettle across the road, and um, I knew, because Mom had taught me so well, that you don't talk to strangers, <laughs> that this poor man, the maintenance, Dartmouth maintenance man, got out of the car and was frantically trying to get me to um, get in his truck so that he could take me to my home and um, I refused to get I was not going to talk to that stranger so this little kindergartner goes walking down the street because I knew that lesson and I knew if I talked to that that stranger I was going to be in trouble so that's early education <laughs> a lesson well learned and he he followed me all the way home at a five-year-old's pace in a garbage maintenance truck and, but my mom taught me that rule. Um, we, um, as um, young people, um, had wonderful education and love of learning that was instilled to us, and oftentimes in travel, and I'm going to let Kathy speak to that, but as we got older, the 60s came along, and our mom, whose education was cut short at, at her soft, at end of her sophomore year at USC um, to raise a family and, and follow um, her first husband and our father's um, football coaching career, um, was at Cornell. And all through our lives, we lived in these education-rich environments. And mom took advantage of that in taking courses and, and um, um, working with local artists and, and regional artists and studies and um, um, taking full advantage of that educational rich environment. And here's the 60s and um, there are 
programs that are coming into place in the 60s as a result of the um, civil rights movement and um, affirmative action. And she was able to petition. She was a pioneer in the Cornell community and able to petition for admittance into the graduate program by getting credit for her courses that she had been taking, her prior college credits, and her um, um, life experience, and um, was admitted into Cornell's graduate program, and there earned her um, master's and um, PhD in psychology and art therapy, and blending all of those um, experiences together. And um, upon the passing of our father, in, at an early age, she had a position in the um, University of Houston at Clear Lake and um, as a professor. And three years later, met, met Jerry and enriched our lives and our educational opportunities as a result of the blending of these two. And that education um, has continued throughout our lives and their love of teaching and um, um, learning lifelong has inspired all of us. And all of her daughters are teachers in one form or another, um, sharing the, the love that we have for different specializations and every one of her granddaughters in one form or another is a teacher. And I think that's pretty special. Then they, um, as a collaborative unit, began working with the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, which Jerry and Mary have um, made reference to. And that learning has extended through that into more and more younger people. And so every child, that we taught and every person that you have worked with in your work and every person that her granddaughters has worked with that educated it's a, like Steve said it's a ripple effect yeah. it goes out into the world it's very special so I'm passing the torch to creativity <laughs> was when I was also walking home from school in the day in Hanover, New Hampshire, we, I got up to the house and I opened the front door and I would say, hi mom, I'm home. And all of a sudden, this smell of oil paint would just waft <laughs> through from the basement studio. And I knew she had been hard at work in the basement painting while we were at school. In those days, it was paint on canvas, and that was just the beginning. I also remember uh, very early on sitting on those little benches in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston or down in New York City, waiting while my mother would look at every to educate people about their creations. Now, on the table, you each have a different branch, mm -hmm. and I would like to ask for a little bit of help from you 
If you can see the little fold of a card and the words that are on that card, I'd like to ask each one person from each table to say what those words are. Because what I'm intending here is I want my mother, our Pat, dear Pat, to hear the names of each series of art that she has created <coughs> that are hanging on the branches uh, that we and um, we collaboratively decided early on to uh, pull our creative resources together, granddaughters and, and us mothers here, to uh, create these centerpieces for you. So let's start over there. Can you pass this off the wall? Off the wall. And we did to see this down in Johnson City, right? The one the, with the sticks. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. 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 Off the wall. Gods and goddesses. Gods and goddesses. We saw, um, it's our fragile home, and we saw that Southern Law Art Center. Yeah. And it was Absolutely. amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh, from the forest. Yeah. 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 From the forest. From the forest. The instant of it all. The instant of it all. And one of these is in the governor's office in Vermont, correct? Still? Or no, they don't want me in the government's office. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look there sometime. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you can see a common thread between the, the, the centerpieces here. They all have this beautiful color scheme, these textures, these, this is Pat's palette. This is, she takes the colors of the environment and she creates her works of art using materials from our natural world. And there's always a common theme in, in that she sees life in the face of destruction. And so very often you will see this growth or these roots, this root that, that keeps us grounded on the earth. And um, speaking of which, uh, without Jerry, she would not have some well-engineered pieces <laughs> to hang on the wall. And isn't it interesting that she married an astronaut to help her stay grounded on the Earth? <laughs> <laughs> So this uh, creativity, this love of creativity is the, is the gift that we represent here today. On um, these tables are, is Pat's art, but take a look over on that table because each of the seven great-grandchildren are displaying their art for you today. Uh, each great-grandchild has a um, a large and a small piece. And uh, we would love to have the art critics take a look. Yes, and the little artist palette. So all of this was uh, created um, thanks to, to Tim for creating the, the cupcake holders, which is in the form of the artist palette, and the, the kids painted those the other day. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention, when I Marley picked up at the airport, and, uh, and so we're driving and we're talking and then we're just driving along and all of a sudden out of the left of my eye, I see, I said, oh my gosh, that's kind of a sculpture. <laughs> and we went by, by Tyson and uh, it was a real thrill to, to see it uh, after so many years. Um, so I just want to say thank you all. Um, Thank you all, daughters and uh, son-in-laws, especially, for making this happen today. And thank you all, you wonderful great-great-grandchildren, uh, for continuing the gift of the love of creativity in our lives. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would first like to thank all of you who traveled 
<laughs> from so many parts of the country to be here today to honor mom and on her birthday, mom and Jer on their anniversary, and made Herculean efforts to get here. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you who made the journey. And I have to say that at the last minute, my daughter Wendy and son-in-law Dusty and three grandsons, Chase, Jack, and Logan, drove for two days from California to be here. And it happened at the last minute, and we are so grateful that they're here. But grateful to all of you, because everyone traveled from a distance to share this moment together and honor you mom. Um, the love of travel was instilled in us at a very young age. Mindy and I were born in California, where Mom and Jerry grew up. And Lori was born in Denver as we began our trek across the country to the east, following our father's football career to Dartmouth and then Cornell. And all of our relatives, except for one family, were still back in California. So we made some pretty creative trips across country <laughs> in a station wagon, or our father fashioned beds for all of us inside the station wagon so we could just stop and camp. And we made many treks across the country, back and forth between the West and East Coast. Stopping along the way to visit the beautiful vistas of our country and cultural encounters that had a lifetime effect on all of us. And that love of travel continued wherever we lived. When we lived in New England, um, we made the trips to Boston, countless trips, New York City, always to go to the art museums and the other cultural um, facilities and to explore different restaurants and ethnic foods and just a myriad of experiences that we share together. And those trips have continued all of our lives when, um, as we were growing up. And then when each of our daughters turned 12, we had two sets of three, <laughs> and then one in the middle, Wendy, and another set of three. And as the first set of three turned 12, Mom and Jerry began a tradition of taking the granddaughters to Washington, D.C. to learn about our nation's capital and country, and also a visit to the Smithsonian, a visit for the space program. Mm -hmm. And they continue that tradition as all of the granddaughters, you know, passed from childhood into adolescence and adulthood and has had lasting effects on all of them. In addition, mom, um, after our dad passed away, she made uh, a very amazing decision as the pioneer woman that she is, that she was going to take a risk and take a trip by herself to Cancun, Mexico. And it was at a time that Cancun was in its infancy, not what it is today in any way, shape, or form. Just a very small village with a few hotels. And she was one of the, um, she made the bold move to sign up for a timeshare in Cancun, one of the very first. And that mushroomed into many wonderful years in Cancun for all of the cars and musics. Mom and Jerry acquired more timeshares um, in their time there, very often trading for art, because Mom ex exhibited art in a gallery in, in Cancun. So we all had wonderful experiences of being in Mexico together as a family, as our children grew up. And this love of travel has become a legacy through the ge our generations. All of our children, our seven children together, are global citizens. They have traveled between the seven of them to every continent on this earth except Antarctica. Whether it's missions in Africa or military moves around the world, or just going because they feel 
that they need to travel and experience other cultures and appreciate that, uh, develop their cultural awareness of the diversity and appreciation. So every continent between the seven of them is astounding. So there's a challenge, girls. Yeah. <laughs> there is one, one untraveled, the first to get to Antarctica. <laughs> it's, and they truly are the global citizens making a difference wherever they go, touching lives. And so we are so appreciative of those beginnings and how it's evolved from mom's pioneering spirit of travel. Um, she made the trip to Greece by herself with a couple of friends to Italy, you know, for one of the first times by herself. And then her partner and she joined arms and have widened and enriched the scope of travel beyond measure. Um, countless trips. Um, I just want to tell one story before I get to Italy. Um, Mom and Jerry um, and we went to on a very wonderful trip to Alaska together 15 years ago now, exactly 15 years. And it was extraordinarily, I don't, I don't know how many people have ever had that experience, if you ever have the chance. It is one of the few pristine, incredible places on earth that you feel like you're as close to heaven as you can be. And the wildlife is beyond description. But we were riding a train from Fairbanks down to Anchorage through Denali National Park. And we're on this train, and the host on the train begins speaking about the northern lights. And she asked everyone on the train, have you ever seen the northern lights? Raise your hand. People raise their hand. Oh, where did you see them? Minnesota, Canada, all of these different people offer their, their, their memories. And Jerry raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry raised his hand. And Jerry raised his hand. And she said, oh, sir, you've seen the Northern Lights? Yes, I have. And she goes, and where did you see that? <laughs> now, the people are in various, you know, looking out the window or maybe talking and listening. And Jerry said two words from space, <laughs> every head in the train <laughs> to focus on Jerry. <laughs> and it was because, as we all know, Jerry is one of the most humble, down-to-earth people you could ever know, most loving. But for him to offer that little gem at that moment was incredible. So he shared his experience educating others about the on the train about the view of the Northern Lights from space. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's a very special memory. And then um, our travels went, winded, you know, ended in Cancun. As the resort blossomed and developed, we wanted new territories. So Mom and Jer had been traveling for some time to Italy and began to share that love of Italy and that travel. Um, with all of us. And I just wanted to say, how many people in this room have shared Italy with Mom and Jerry? Just read their hand. It's pretty amazing. A number of people have actually been there with them. Italy became one of the most incredible experiences for all of us who had the joy of being there. And for Mom and Jerry, they truly feel that part of themselves live in Italy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we made a trip last October. Uh, Mary and Jerry were there. Stephen and Carol were there. Ron and Lois. We went to Fran. We Fran. I'm so sorry what happened to the passport. But you were with us. Um, but um, Italy is very, very important to them and always has been. And whether it's exploring the food and cooking together, which is part of the great event, is that wherever we are in the world, we all cook together, or traveling to some cultural site. The trips all involve lots of research. And I've had the great joy of, of helping the last few years to make that journey to research, to find new hidden gems that we had never seen, 
to share that with people, um, introduce people to Italy for the first time maybe, and always take a piece of that home and it will always live in all of us. But um, as years went on, mom, we had mom's walker <laughs> and we had handicap sticker. And many times, you know, the roads in Italy are very <laughs> narrow. The parking spots are even smaller. And um, we would have to navigate. And sometimes we'd find a spot and not be sure if we could fit into it. And mom would always say, Jerry, you dock that space capsule on Skylab. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he always did. And I have to tell you, he can be right up there with any Italian driver in you know, has that kind of skill. Did you ever eat any fungi in Italy? Oh, yes. I know how much you love those. <laughs> Ron is a, uh, did not, uh, mushrooms that they purchased, you know, Ron wasn't quite sure about eating those mushrooms. <laughs> Coming from the earth. <laughs> but um, I wanted to uh, just thank all of you who shared those travel experiences. Thank Mom and Jerry. Because what you've done is ventured into the unknown forge new territories, and you've translated your experiences into inspirations and growth into new directions for people and ourselves, our family and our friends, yourselves, and creativity and ventures. Because wherever you go, you've been inspired that. And I want to close with a quote that is very close to mom's heart and really encapsulates what we've all been sharing about the love of these three gifts and as they're reflected in mom's life. And it's by Boris Pasternak. Life, too, is only an instant, only a dissolving of ourselves into everyone, as if we gave ourselves as gifts. Mom has given those gifts Exponentially, Jamie. <laughs> and Jerry, too. And we couldn't love you more dearly or be more grateful that we've been blessed with the two of you and this family and our friends. So stand in here with And we don't have some. <laughs> <laughs>
whether it is in a piece of art, in something out in nature, whether it's the beautifully created meal that you have placed on the table, whether it's in the beauty of a really good bottle of wine, which I know we all love, and even handsome Italian waiters named Ricardo <laughs> have shown us that the world is a beautiful place. <laughs> and we're gonna see him, I think three times. <laughs> so I, thanks Pop Jerry. Um, so I have created a video um, that hopefully captures an incredible 90 years that you have lived. You have done so much, and I thank you for being an inspiration because you have lived life to the fullest, and you show us that each day we should wake up and we should keep creating and we should keep doing something to help the people around us. And I thank you because I definitely have learned that from you. And I also would like to thank the Carr children for sharing your father with us because he really the only grandfather we've known. And you guys are just amazing. So, <laughs> all right, with that.